All right, guys, this is Ross. This is part two of the garden tour, I guess. This is meant to be a walkthrough, but um, we're kind of turning this into a tour at this point. So we're getting a little bit of a tour here in the spring, kind of see what's going on. And in this part of the, the uh, tour, I kind of want to make this quick. Um, so here we have on the wall, I have this wall back here. Really is nice having that wall, I have to say. Um, we have some pomegranates. I have them all in 10 gallon containers. Some are much older. We get from you know younger all the way down to older here. It's hard to see because there's many trees in the background. But uh, yeah, they're quite tall, quite vigorous trees. Um, this one hasn't woken up. Just now noticing that. I know it's not dead. Do the scratch test. That's green. So this tree's alive, but it's not waking up, surprisingly. Um, still waiting for my pomegranates to flower, man. Holy crap. I mean, I've had these guys for quite some time. Will they just please flower? <laughs> what is going on? I don't, I don't know what the, what the deal is with these guys. Maybe they don't like the greenhouse. I don't know. But uh, you would have thought that they would have flowered by now. Maybe they flower a little bit later in the season. I know they're a late fall fruit, but my lord, they're so big. They're probably three years old now. Some of these are in their fourth year, I think. Can you please flower? <laughs> if anybody has any idea how I can get these to flower, please let me know. They're not like figs. I mean, they're not like stone fruits and apples and pears. They really, for whatever reason, take. they're not very precocious. Here's my jujubes, which I want to do a separate video on, just talking about them. I also want to do a video on the pomegranates, if and when they do flower. Because um, I feel like my pomegranates have quite a nice form to them at this point. But these jujubes are incredible trees. Highly recommend uh, people getting these. And it actually looks like uh, they may be flowering. If you can believe that. They have put out... Let's see if I can... See these little bumps here? Those are going to be the flowers. And it's all over these trees. These jujubes are a real special fruit, guys. I even did a graft here. This is my Lang tree. And I did a graft of Zhuzhou. This is a new variety. It's supposed to be quite productive here. Lang, I have found, and they've said it's supposed to be productive here, but I found it doesn't do well. Uh, I don't know why. Maybe because it's, it's a younger tree compared to the other trees that I have. Even this tree here that I just got from the nursery this year, sugarcane. It's supposed to be a very sweet jujube, which I'm looking forward to just to taste it. Um, you know, even, even the one I just got from the nursery, like I said, like I was saying, this Lang tree is pretty much younger than this sugar cane. And this, this Lang I've had for two more years than this one. So this is in its third year that I've had it. And this is in its first year that I've had it. So, but the age is quite similar, I would, th I would say. The first year I had the Lang, it suckered profusely and I didn't realize what was going on. And I think that kind of put it back an entire year. We also have lots of fruit trees here in containers along this, this little bit here. Um, this is my Indian free peach that has now put out peaches, which I'll need to thin very soon. Uh, also my contender peach has put out peaches. The Indian free is the one that I'm really excited about though. Um, I also just got a couple new varieties in here that I've added these together. Uh, with the peaches. Here's my Che tree, which I'll do a separate video on, I think. You can see in here, uh, the Che fruits are forming and uh, quite productive, actually. The, the tree is quite loaded. The problem is, you know, and it's a pretty big tree, too. You can see all that. All that over here is the Che tree. So, the problem though with the Che is that it likes to drop fruits at a young age. A lot of people have speculated a great many things with these. And then back here, this is my um, 
Razzmatazz Grape. <laughs> and Razzmatazz is actually fruiting now. It's putting out these little fruitlets. This guy is supposed to um, fruit continuously throughout the year. Unlike most grapes that will fruit um, once and then that's it. So really exciting grape variety. I did have, tr I had trained it up that bamboo pole, but it looks like a lot of that had died back. And we're kind of starting over a little bit from the base, which is okay. The tree is, or the vine is quite vigorous, so not too worried about that. And it looks like it's putting out fruit, which is real nice. We have also some new trees that I got this year, as well as in the back, a really um, struggling, God, this thing really is struggling. This is a loquat, Christmas loquat. It's tough to even see. It's being shaded out quite well. But, you know, it is putting out leaves now. You can see here. So the tree is making a comeback from its awful greenhouse experience this winter. <laughs> and then we have all these apple trees mixed in here. We have apples back here that have flowered. You can see there's apples forming there come back in here more apples forming you know these apple trees are really are covered in fruits we have an apricot here we have a plum in the back an Italian prune plum and this is a pluot and then even further back which I can't even really reach that's kind of a problem we just got a four-in-one planting that I did in one container this is the high density planting video that I did that I didn't sh I didn't really get a chance to show you guys, but those are all in this white pot here, uh, white fleshed peaches. Very excited for the white fleshed. I really like the lack of acidity that a white fleshed peach has. And then we have more apples that sh that need to get thinned and probably should get bagged or sprayed if they don't get bagged, uh, at least for insecticide. I don't know what my codling moth situation is here yet maybe I should use this year as an experiment and not spray or not bag and see what happens more apples back here as you can see uh, right down in here I planted I had some excess wood that I pruned off of very large trees that I got from my friend in those 30 gallons and the cuttings are very deep in the ground I mean they're probably uh, some of them are four feet long and you can see down here the cutting is now coming to life So sticking cuttings in the ground does work Who knows? Uh, I won't get fruit off of these trees. I'm sure but um, You know, this is nice area here to have them in because it's next to this wall We're kind of against the house where I had planted the uh, other figs that I had showed you in a previous video So uh, these figs should do okay and if they don't it's not the end of the world but the nice part about having them here in this particular location one I said is the wall and the microclimate that's going on in here but two is that I like to store all of my hardier trees so that here in this location in the winter time I just moved all of my um, persimmons my uh, pears and stone fruits and apples and jujubes and all the hardier trees all everything that's hardy so anything really that i have that's on a loquat a fig or a pomegranate <laughs> that's in a container goes in this location so what will end up happening in the future is that these trunks so these trees will then be surrounded by pots so there will be some added insulation that way and uh i think it's a nice way to grow a fig is just surround the fig with uh with pots <laughs> and other um straw that i like to throw on here so all the straw that's on the ground that was covered covering the pots anyway here's the garden bed boy i this is the first time i'm seeing this in two days and everything is just going crazy we have some hakurai turnips in here a very interesting variety of turnip that uh, they call them snow apples. If you don't know what they are, if you never had one, you should try one. Um, that's what I'm doing right now. Never had one, and I'm trying one. <laughs> I'm trying many, actually. You can actually eat them fresh, I've heard. They're pretty big with market gardeners, 
Um, they're also quite big with um, with chefs too because the nice thing about them is that you can use sorry for the camera guys I, my wire got stuck on the fence uh, as you see but the Hakurai turnips you can use every part of the turnip so you can use the turnip itself plus you can use the stems and the leaves and saute that and all that's edible and all that's good this is my Preto tree just threw down some comfrey here to give it a little bit of fertilizer. It's starting to grow now, really nice. Um, right in here, I think we have some onions coming up. Um, I don't know, we'll have to see. There doesn't seem to be much going on in here. Maybe these are the onions, yeah. So here's the onions right here that are coming up. Um, I did these all by seed. This is a Walla Walla onion. Sorry for that finger there, guys. It seems like there's some grass mixed in, so I want to take out the grass. Um, some grass seed, I guess, got in here. And then there's the, also the onion, which is the single-stemmed plants there. Um, right back next to and in between the figs, we have... These are tiger almonds. Very excited. I've had these... Uh, they're quite good and they form something that looks like grass almost like a, uh, a head of grass like crabgrass but the root similar to like a peanut is edible so you take out the roots and with the roots are these little almonds that really taste good they're really good we have some string beans in here another fig and more string beans down in there more string beans uh, in between the pomegranates and the figs. Plus we planted some peppers. We also have some seedling peppers coming up in here. Tough to see unless I get a little close up for you guys. This is my, um, hmm, what, could, what pepper is that? I'm drawing a blank guys, but it does really well here. Oh, it's Jimmy Nardello. It does really well here, so excited for that. Plus we have some tomatoes in here mixed in with the snap peas and the snap peas are growing, they're, they're going wild, man. I have about 400 or so snap pea plants. I'm not exaggerating. <laughs> I planted quite a bit. Uh, this isn't 400 right here, but they're very close together as I wanted them. So they can kind of support themselves. They put out these things here to then support themselves these tendrils, I guess they're called. And then what's gonna happen is that they're gonna give me a nice crop soon. And the tomatoes are a large enough size that they're getting light. And the tomatoes will eventually outgrow um, the snap peas and the snap peas will be removed probably about sometime in June because that's when the snap peas, it gets too warm for them and they peter out. I also planted some uh, tomato seeds in here of many different varieties. I think altogether I'm growing somewhere in the neighborhood of 15 or so varieties of tomatoes this year. Very excited for that. Um, I guess we can go back and show you what's over here because I didn't really talk about it, but we have fennel. And then all in here is all kinds of cabbages. Uh, my bok choy, you can see right in the middle there, is going to seed, unfortunate. And then you have the broccoli going, um, putting out heads now. We have some Romanesco squash in the back, more figs, carrots along this side. Everything's very close together, and I'm trying to s push my limits here of how close I can grow a lot of this stuff and um, see really what the minimum spacing is. And I've planted these seedlings at different times and you know different things at different grow rates, so they're all coming up at different times. And you can see there underneath the broccoli, the large broccoli is seedlings right there in the middle of the frame. So the broccoli that will be harvested, I'll take that out probably at a smaller size and then up coming underneath the broccoli will be new broccoli plants to hopefully take their spot. So interesting all the stuff that's coming up. Right here is a Chinese lantern plant that's coming up. I planted all kinds of uh, different things along this part of the garden. I think these are all Chinese lanterns that are coming up. 
A little late to come up. I'm surprised how long it took. Then we have the peaches, and the peaches are doing fantastic. Thinned them all out. I still need to bag more fruits. Again, I may just ditch the bagging and see how the critter and insect situation is here this year and see if I even need to bag. I may have a couple years where I get real lucky and don't deal with anything until they find they find my peaches and then <laughs> then it becomes a problem. Um, then we have garlic underneath. The garlic is looking incredible, by the way. My friend Garlic Mike, that's his name, Garlic Mike. He gave me um, garlic this year and boy oh boy does it look good and it's very very good size I did something right with the garlic <laughs> um, now I just need to harvest it and store the stuff appropriately right in here along this pole that I have for the espiade peaches is gonna be um, what the hell is this this is scarlet runner beans I had them last year they're a beautiful beautiful plants very ornamental uh, they attract hummingbirds you can also eat the flowers yourself that taste quite good and they also put out bean pods that you can cook and they taste quite good cooked down in here next to the garlic are the leeks that I started we just have a ton of alliums in this bed I mean underneath the peach trees it doesn't seem to matter you know I don't doesn't matter how close I put together this stuff it doesn't matter uh, you know, how much spacing is all in between this doesn't matter what's here we even have some strawberries that I planted I mean we're gonna have crazy abundance and then right next to that is the Egyptian walking onions a friend of mine sent to me they're now forming these heads and I believe these things are what then falls over and then roots itself in the ground and then that's why they're called walking onions we also have a stray potato I didn't plant here <laughs> coming up. And then right all in here are chives that I planted. We had a little bit of an episode on chives, wild chives in my garden. You can see these little things here, are chives coming up. Um, and the wild chives, I decided, um, I actually dug one of them up and relocated it here. And this one I tasted like a week ago and holy hell was it good and it looks good too after transplanting it looks like here the nasturtiums have come up a very peppery lettuce that flowers beautifully and the flowers are also edible that tastes really good very peppery those flowers I'm not really a flower eater but I am now with the nasturtiums that's for sure and then the honeyberry is fruiting I did a video recently on that uh, we have the potatoes that are going absolutely bonkers. I talked about potato hilling this year. So the potatoes are doing really well. We also have strawberries underneath the grapevines coming in. More potatoes, more honeyberries, potatoes that will be hilling. Again, if you didn't see the hilling video, go watch that because it talks about everything I'm going to do with these potatoes. There's a bit of a strategy that I can't really go into time yet. And then here's uh, more grapevines, or not gra more grapevines, and then also strawberries down there. Here we have a honeyberry that looks to be really freaking taken off. I thought this one was dead. I had piled up tons of mulch here. I mean, mountains of mulch. And the thing came through the mulch just fine. Uh, I took some of the mulch away since then, and it's been taken off. And we also have some soybeans that I planted in here. I may want to put down more soybean plants. But since it's raining, I think they're coming in quite nicely now. I uh, just need a little bit of patience, I think, and we'll see what happens. And then we have another grapevine. I should have done a video for you guys already on the grapevines. Um, the abundance out of these things at such a young age is absolutely crazy. And they taste insane. Uh, we have down here a thing of mint that I tried to contain with this little black stuff here <laughs> that didn't work <laughs> but it doesn't seem all that uh, difficult to uh, pick it all up so if I really want to contain this I don't think it's gonna be that much work uh, what I should do is take that one over there and kind of bring that back really you got to get all the roots up 
because it really likes to send out roots. Here's a rosemary plant. You can't have a garden in my mind without rosemary every year. I can't seem to, for whatever reason, perennialize this stuff here. There's a couple varieties, one called Arp. There's another one out there. I don't remember the name. But um, they're supposed to be perennial here. So I don't know what the hell is happening. I don't know why mine doesn't survive in this location. But um, yeah, maybe it has something to do with me cutting it way back in the wintertime. Does anyone have any experience with that in this area? Let me know. Uh, then we have some lettuce. I need to harvest this stuff. It's very edible at this point. I've harvested many um, bok choy cabbages at this point. And this is going to be next. And we have some radishes coming in. These are watermelon radishes per my grandmother's request. And we have in here mizuna. We have some, uh, you can see the mizuna coming in right here. And then in here is the cut and come again lettuce uh, you get from Johnny's. I'm forgetting the name. Looks like more Mizuna in here. And then all this lettuce that's coming in very, very thickly that I need to probably thin some of this out. I also really need to water this. So I'm glad we got some rain because it was starting to get a little bitter. But all that is various different types of lettuces. And it looks like whatever this is here, I think this is arugula, it's going to seed. Yeah, this is arugula. Holy hell is that good. We also seem to perennialize kale this year. Two of the plants that I had last year, I had six, I had four last year. So two out of the four made it. And uh, this one's going to seed. So I don't really think I'm able to perennialize this because it just goes to seed. But um, yeah, I'll have more seeds, I guess. So that's nice. And this one I think will probably do the same thing. Probably go to seed. This is the dino kale. Very good in this tender form. I really love this arugula. Holy crap. Mm -hmm. Raw lettuce, guys. Believe it. It's good. Um, here's the trash pile, compost pile. Hopefully I talked to you guys about this already and what I had plans to do. You know, here's my Hugo culture bed that's really taken off with all kinds of different things. I did talk about this. Some Gumi is uh, putting out fruit here. You can see. Those are the Gumi fruits. They'll turn red soon. Scarlet and I believe Sweet Gem, I think, is the ones I have, or Red Gem. That is my comfrey flowering. Very beautiful plants. The apple trees are doing nicely. I mean, everything looks so nice. And I've planted many of strawberries in here. This is Rucker's Scarlet that I was telling you guys about in one of my previous videos about strawberries. I think this right here is some kind of flowering plant. I don't want to pull this, it may be a weed. We have bee balm over there that's getting mowed over by accident. And then I think this is Jap the uh, Chinese lantern plant. Really trying to get as many plants to attract um, hummingbirds that I can. I don't know what kind of mushroom that is, but I am not eating it. <laughs> Looks like it was bit into actually by something but uh more gumi and currants potatoes in that bed your cone is in that bed here's the pawpaw two pawpaw trees i planted next to each other recently read uh neil pearson himself in one of the online communities about pawpaw said that it's a myth that pawpaw need to be planted at a young age in partial shade well, doesn't that suck? Because this is one of the shadiest spots of my yard and it doesn't get very much light. They haven't grown very much. But uh, I've got some comfrey down, as you can see, that will decompose. And I've really been fertilizing these very, very heavily, adding in lots of gypsum to really jumpstart these guys. Maybe a couple years before I get fruit. It will be a couple years, I think. Long-term project, man. These things have been in the ground. This is their third year, I think. Third spring. The carrots here seem to be doing very well. I had overwintered these carrots through the winter. And then I also planted more seedlings now here that are coming up all over the place. Lots of abundance in the backyard, guys. This is the Hugo culture bed that I'm, uh, I'm gonna finish at some point. You can see that there's multiple levels of this. 
sticks and other various pieces of wood then topped with um, roots and soil from leftover containers and then topped with wood chips and that will form a nice hugel culture bed similar to that one and then we have back here a cactus pad that uh, my friend Steve I'm sure he's watching right now he sent me this so I'm trying to root this in the ground um, I also have back here Steve both of your serviceberry plants that you sent me Saskatoon's really excited for those they seem to be growing pretty well even in the shady area I have them in I'm really trying to maximize what I can grow in the shade you would not believe I should do a separate video on what I am growing in the shade those are all ornamental plants back there guys so um, we got one more side of the yard left to do over here and then on the other side of the house so I'll do that for you guys now but uh, I'm gonna do it in another video so I'll see you guys probably the next day after this one uh, for the third part of this tour the spring garden tour of 2018 so I'll talk to you guys later and uh, I'll see you guys tomorrow hopefully all right take care